Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel and this complete settings guide for X-Plane 12. In this video I will be showing you all my settings including PC and video control panel as well as my in-game settings for the best experience. Please note that as of the date of this video, I'm using the NVIDIA driver 546.65 as all the current NVIDIA drivers causes issues and stuttering with X-Plane 12. If you are interested in my PC setup, please consult the about section of my YouTube channel link is provided to you in the description section of the video. Let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to search for and launch game mode settings. From game mode settings, we're going to ensure that the game mode is turned on. After extensive testing, I have found that when game mode is turned on, x performs better and stutters less. Next, we're going to click here on graphics. From the graphics section, we are going to go to custom options for apps. And we are going to click on browse and select Xplain 12. We're going to locate the executable Xplain.exe and we're going to click on add. Next, scroll down to Xplain once it is added. Now click on options. Select High Performance GPU NVIDIA GeForce. Obviously, I have the RTX 4090. Then we're going to click Save. Next, we're going to head back to the graphics settings. And now we're going to click on Change Default Graphics Settings. From the Default Graphics Settings page, we want to make sure that Hardware Accelerated GPU Scheduling, Variable Refresh Rate, and Optimizations for Windows Games are all turned on. If you don't see any of these options or you see some of them, just make sure that they are turned on. Having this combination of settings turned on significantly improved performance on my setup and reduced stuttering in x 12. Next, we're going to go to the Device Manager. From the Device Manager, we're going to locate the Bluetooth device, if equipped, and we are going to disable wireless Bluetooth. If you are not using Bluetooth for any purpose, it is highly recommended that you disable the device. Please do not uninstall it as it will be reinstalled at the next restart. Just make sure that you disable the device. Next, we're going to scroll to System Devices and locate the High Precision Event Timer. If you don't see this, that is okay. Just if you do find the High Precision Event Timer on your setup, right click and disable the device. The High Precision Event Timer does not really do anything useful and does not break anything by disabling it. You will definitely gain a little bit more performance and reduce the number of services running in the background. I highly recommend that you disable it, but if you do encounter any issues, you can simply right click and enable the device again. Next, we're going to take a look at the NVIDIA Control Panel. To do this, we're going to say Show More and select the NVIDIA Control Panel. The first thing we're going to do in the NVIDIA Control Panel is we're going to head to Adjust Video Color Settings. We are going to select with NVIDIA Settings, select the Advanced tab, and select the Full Range for the Dynamic Colors. Next, we're going to go to set up G-Sync. If you are using a G-Sync or FreeSync capable monitor, make sure enable G-Sync, G-Sync compatible, and enable for windowed and full screen modes is checked. Next, we're going to go to manage 3D settings. From the manage 3D settings, we're going to head over to the global settings tab first. Then we're going to go to the shader cache size and set this to unlimited. From the program settings, we're going to select x 12. If you don't see it in the list, you can simply add, locate the x file in your x installation folder and hit add. If you are using a G-Sync monitor, I highly recommend that you set the low latency mode to ultra. If you are not using a G-Sync monitor, use on. Next, set your power management mode to prefer maximum performance. 
And lastly, set threaded optimization to off. In order to improve performance and reduce stuttering, I highly recommend that you watch my video Two Tweaks on How to Reduce Stuttering in Xplain 12. Link to it will be provided in the description section of the video. Next, I'm going to show you a performance tip that might just increase the performance in Xplain 12 and reduce stuttering. I highly recommend that you do this every time there is an NVIDIA driver update or a SIM update for Xplain 12. We are going to head to the Xplain 12 installation. We're going to click on Xplain 12, click on the output folder, and then go to the shader cache. From the shader cache, we're going to double click on Vulkan, and then we're going to right click and delete everything here. Now you can start Xplain 12 and enjoy the smoothness. Before we delve into the in-game settings, a lot of you have been asking me about what plugins do you use for Xplain 12. And I'm currently using XATC Chatter for non-interactive ATC, XP Realistic for the uh, head shake inside of the cockpit. I'm also using AviTab, better pushback to push out of my position, Fly with Lua to control the audio during my live streams, SAM for ground handling, Traffic Global for AI traffic, X Camera for the camera movement, and Terrain Radar, which is used by several add-ons for Terrain Radar capability, including the Zebo Boeing 737. We have now loaded the TOLUS A321 at London Heathrow Airport. The scenery is by Thai Models. This is quite an involved scenery and an involved aircraft. Let us now take a look at the in-game settings. Please do note that I will not be discussing each one of these settings and what they do, but if you are interested in the graphic settings and the meaning of each one of these settings and how you can tweak them to best fit the performance of your specific setup, please consult my graphic settings guide for Xplain 12. Link to it will be provided in the description section of the video. Suffice it to say that texture quality is something that will affect your VRAM and will considerably affect your performance. And unless you have a graphics card with sufficient VRAM, you will more than likely not be able to set this as at maximum as it will consume a lot of VRAM and then it will become a bottleneck. I recommend that you put this on uh, on high uh, or perhaps even medium if you do not have a capable graphics card. The ambient occlusion quality is something that does not really add a lot in terms of visual fidelity, but it does tax your frames. And so if you do not have a capable setup, uh, you can completely turn this off uh, in, um, you know, to compromise the visual quality a little bit for much better performance. Rendering resolution, FSR super sampling is a feature intended for larger displays, but I don't think that Laminar has implemented this properly. With this uh, being set at ultra or anything than, uh, you know, full resolution, you will be getting the blurred textures in your cockpit as well as the scenery. So I highly recommend that you, this is one of the things you need to keep at full resolution and compromise with the other sliders in order to make sure that everything looks sharp. Anti-aliasing is the biggest problem with x 12. Uh, there is a lot of aliasing going on in x 12. And setting this at anything above 4 will really bring your machine down. Um, so I highly recommend that you keep it at 4 or maybe even reduce it down to 2 MSAA. Anisotropic filtering is something that does not tax your frames. So I highly recommend that you keep it at 16x. You are also able to set anisotropic filtering in the NVIDIA control panel to 16 and turn it off in the simulator. Cloud quality is another thing that I highly recommend you keep at maximum, otherwise the clouds will not look as good. And to me, cloud quality is very important, so I'd like to compromise on other things such as rendering distance and world object density in favor of having better cloud quality. Shadow quality is something I highly recommend that you set to maximum and also for the cockpit shadow improvement, there is a full video that I've created on how to improve the cockpit shadows. Link to it will be provided 
in the description section of the video. The next two sliders that we're going to take a look at are the rendering distance and world object density. Now, those two sliders obviously will cause um, performance degradation when pushed all the way to the right. And so it is recommended that you set them wisely. Now, what I found out uh, throughout my extensive testing um, is that rendering distance is something that really affects performance considerably. Now, let's take a look here. We have the setting here set at high. And if we go back to the scene here at London Heathrow, we're getting about 44 FPS, 45 FPS. The scene is still pretty good, but for uh, you know systems that are less capable, um, this is probably going to go down to the 30s. So if you go to the outside view and take a look here at the scene here at London Heathrow, you'll see that you know everything, even far in the distance, you can still see the trees. You can see some of the buildings still with the high setting for the rendering distance. I'm going now to change this back to medium and we're gonna click done and take a look at the results. From the visual fidelity perspective, you can see that, yeah, we have lost a little bit of the trees and maybe a little bit of the buildings far in the distance, but in terms of visual fidelity, it's really not affected that much with this setting change, but the performance gain inside the cockpit is quite significant. You can see now that we're back to about 49, 50 FPS or so, which is much, much better. So this really can improve performance quite significantly. As a matter of fact, in a lot of my streams, I take this down rendering distance to medium if I'm flying in very dense areas. So you can definitely, even with a very high setup, you can uh, gain a lot of performance by moving the rendering distance to the medium. And you can increase other sliders if, um, if you so desire. So this is gonna give you five FPS that you can increase some of the other sliders to get better visual fidelity. For example, the cloud quality. If this was at high and your rendering distance was here, you can definitely move your rendering distance to medium and set your cloud quality to high. So of course, in order to get that you know, balance and that sweet spot for your settings. You're going to have to tweak and make changes and see how it works on your specific setup. But what I found is that rendering distance can really, really hog performance. The world object density, uh, again, from high to maximum, uh, again, there is uh, a taxation uh, that your CPU is going to suffer. Uh, so I highly recommend that you move this to high. It is really not going to change, again, the visual scene. Um, there is very subtle difference between maximum and high. Uh, with high, you still get very, very nice visuals, and the density of the buildings uh, is still quite high. Um, for me, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference in terms of the visual fidelity, so I keep this on high. Vegetation density, I always set this at maximum because I like to see the trees uh, when I'm coming to land, for example, or flying VFR. It just really creates for a more convincing scene. But you can always bring this down if it, it is, it will affect performance uh, quite considerably uh, at very dense areas. So you might want to play a little bit with this. Um, uh, with this slider, especially if you have texture quality set to maximum, this is something that you might want to reduce a little bit as it uses a lot of VRAM. Enable 3D vegetation, I always keep this checked because this is what gives you the 3D trees um, and the shrubs, uh, grass, uh, all of that good stuff uh, around airports. Uh, without it, you can save a lot of performance, by the way. It can really affect your FPS. So it is my recommendation that if you have a less capable machine that you turn this off, uh, but again, it's gonna be at the expense of visual fidelity. Well, folks, this pretty much brings us to the conclusion of our complete settings guide for x 12. If you have any questions as usual, please do post them in the comment section below. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye for now.